Good afternoon, attendees. Welcome to Osprosis and Fall Prevention Festival organized by SATA Health. My name is Huda and I'm your MC for today. Let's welcome our esteemed speaker, Liana Nabila Zainal from SATA Health. Liana is a senior occupational therapist. She graduated, she graduated from Nanyang Polytechnic with a diploma in occupational therapy and subsequently obtained her Bachelor of Occupational Therapy at Glasgow Caledonian University. Seven years in service, Nabila worked in a community hospital and day rehabilitation center setting. Today, she'll be talking about ensuring a safe environment for your loved ones. Please take note that you're only able to ask questions during the Q&A session at the end of the talk, either through the Q&A box, chat box, or you can raise your hand and we will unmute you. Now, I'll pass the time to Diana. Hello, uh, thank you, Huda, and uh, thank you everyone for tuning in this uh, Sunday afternoon uh, in the last few of our talks in the Osteoporosis and Fall Prevention Festival by SATA Comet. So uh, without further ado, I will be uh, starting on my talk later, which is on uh, false prevention in the home. And hopefully there will be some takeaways that you can uh, go back with from this talk. Okay. All right, so falls can result from an interaction of multiple and diverse risk factors. So just as a, a big overview, um, there are intrinsic factors uh, that will result in falls, such as low vision. Uh, so basically in seniors, uh, we will see uh, generally a degeneration in bodily functions. So low vision can be such as uh, cataract, glaucoma, um, retinopathy or macular degeneration. Um, muscle weakness, uh, generally of the lower limbs, um, polymedication and interaction of uh, different medications that can result uh, in a decrease in bodily functions. So that may result in falls. Not all interaction with medications can result in falls, but uh, as mentioned, it will be a diverse risk factor. So this can result, uh, it is one of the causes that can result in falls. Okay, poor balance and coordination. It could be due to um, just aging or it could be due to chronic diseases or other uh, background medical conditions uh, such as stroke, Parkinson's, and uh, etc. Uh, poor cognition and safety awareness. So this is uh, more on the cognitive side. Uh, so those um, uh, who have Alzheimer's dementia or just generally decrease in cognitive uh, functions in the elderly. Okay, but today we'll be talking more about extrinsic factors, which is more on the environment. Okay, um, before I go on to that, uh, extrinsic factors also include a lack of external supports. Um, so um, seniors who go about doing the activities in the home or in the community and they lack the external support, such as your walking aids or uh, handlebars or uh, things like that and also improper footwear that can result in falls. Okay, so today we'll be covering more on the environmental factors inside the home. So these uh, can include things like inadequate lighting, uh, obstacles or obstructions in the way. So things like uh, clutter and um, uh, things on the floor, they are not arranged, um, furniture, they are not properly positioned, also uneven flooring, slippery floor and um, inappropriate furniture, uh, such as a furniture that is too low or too high or unsteady or a furniture that is on wheels, for example. So the approach to falls is multidimensional. Uh, it consists primarily of preventive acting on extrinsic causes, and then uh, also together with treatment of chronic and acute diseases. Um, rehabilitation is fundamental in order to improve residual capacity uh, motor skills, postural control, and strength. Right. So um, for my talk, uh, mainly in a nutshell, fall prevention strategies in the home aim to remove the fall hazards and provide supports to compensate for the diminished bodily functions in the elderly. 
Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to talk about is uh, grab bars. Okay, so I'm sure all of us have seen uh, grab bars before uh, at many homes. Uh, it could be your homes as well that already have grab bars. That's great. So who are grab bars suitable for? So um, those with decreased balance when walking or those with decreased leg strength and need support to stand up or go up steps. So grab bars are not limited to just the elderly. If you have uh, any um, chronic diseases or any disabilities uh, that uh, cause decrease in balance or decrease in leg strength, uh, you can also uh, install these grab bars as you see fit. So where can they be placed? Um, this is not limiting. So usually people put it in shower areas. Uh, toilet bowl area, okay. Uh, thresholds and curbs, so meaning your toilet curb or your kitchen curb or your front door curb as well, okay. Steps at the front door entrance. So some uh, HDB uh, flats they have multi step entrances, and then um, like what you see in the picture, there you can put grab bars there to help to support you when you go up the steps. Okay, uh, some patients actually put grab bars at the bedside. So when they turn uh, out of their bed and if they are near a wall, some I see some patients putting a grab bar just beside their wall so that they can pull themselves up to stand by the side of the bed. Okay, so um, it really literally couldn't be anywhere. So um, any other places where the senior needs additional support. So grab bars provide additional hand support to maintain balance when moving within a small space. Uh, and it provides a place to pull on or push down for support when going into sitting or standing. Okay, so um, where you put your grab bars is important because we don't want to put grab bars where it's unreachable. Um, we don't want to put grab bars where you actually overreach to reach for the grab bars because uh, we know that overreaching is also one of the risks uh, of falling down. Okay, so put your grab bars where it's easily reachable um, so that you don't overreach for your grab bar. So what you see on the right side, the picture of a drop-down grab bar. Okay, so some uh, toilets, uh, they don't have a wall that is very near the toilet bowl or it's uh, obstructed by some pipes. So um, a good option is a drop-down grab bar. So it can actually flip up and down and you can easily put it right beside the toilet bowl. Yeah, so uh, you don't need to overreach for the grab bar on the wall. Okay, so some types of grab bars that you can see in the picture, it's a variety. Uh, there are vertical grab bars, so you can pull to stand. Uh, vertical grab bars are also commonly placed um, at the curb, so at your toilet curb. So uh, when you hold on to the vertical grab bar, you can cross over the curb from outside to inside. Horizontal grab bars are what we commonly see uh, to push up to stand from the shower chair or the toilet bowl, or to provide support when needing to walk over a short distance, such as inside the toilet. So some uh, old HDB flats, they have uh, separated toilet and shower cubicles. Um, so as you can see, um, such as inside the separated uh, toilet bowl cubicle, uh, you, the senior needs to walk um, maybe about one meter from the uh, curb to the toilet bowl. So you can put uh, a horizontal grab bar there to aid the person. Okay. Uh, some public places and homes also have uh, angled, grab, uh, angled grab bars uh, to pull to stand. It really depends on your comfort. Some uh, prefer to pull on a vertical grab bar. Some prefer to pull on an angled grab bar. Okay, and what I mentioned just now is the drop down grab bar. So chosen for situations where the wall is too far away or blocked by something. Okay, so just choose the type of grab bar that um, is uh, suitable to the function that it is intended for. Okay, so how can you install grab bars for your loved ones? So actually you don't uh, need a therapist or a doctor to apply for you. You can actually uh, apply on your own via HDBEs. Okay, uh, direct application. So if you're wondering, I've just uh, put the QR code over there for your usage. Okay, uh, if you're unsure where to put or um, what type is suitable or if your senior has 
uh, complicated uh, medical background that you're not sure with, you can always consult an occupational therapist from AIC or your occupational therapist uh, from the rehab center that your senior is doing exercise at. Okay. Um, grab bars are also uh, available via their home improvement program. So home improvement programs, they usually have um, the stipulated time that your block will undergo the HIP. So if your block is undergoing HIP at the moment or planning for HIP, you can um, opt in for the grab bars and let them know where, they, where you want uh, them to fix it. Yeah, so, but uh, usually if your HIP is in one year or uh, in one and a half years, sometimes uh, it's best not to wait, okay? So um, just go ahead and uh, apply for HTBEs. Uh, it's uh, highly subsidized uh, for HTB. And uh, unfortunately, yes, because it's uh, a HDB program, it's not available for private housing. Lah. Yeah. So yeah, best not to wait for a HIP if it's still long. Um, but uh, if let's say your HIP is in one year, you, you can um, install via HDBEs first. And then when your HIP comes, uh, let them know that uh, I wish to include um, the grab bars as well in under the HIP. So, um, of course, you can also self-purchase and install on your own if you're handy. Uh, you can work the drill. Uh, if you know somebody who can fix it for you for free, for example, uh, you can purchase the grab bars uh, at certain shops selling um, assistive devices, uh, such as uh, Rehab Mart, DNR Wheels. Uh, these um, assistive device shops, you can usually find um, like a small shop in our public hospitals if we have. Uh, if you're not sure, you can just do a quick Google. Uh, these are like one of the more common vendors lah in Singapore that you can purchase grab bars. Okay, I do not recommend uh, fixing uh, towel railings. Uh, I think that's quite common sometimes. Um, towel railings are very thin. They don't provide a lot of support. They might um, give way under the weight. So best to, uh, best to uh, purchase proper grab bars. So nowadays, uh, they have HDB East provides color contrasting grab bars. Uh, so these are good, uh, suitable for seniors with low vision. So, so seniors with low vision, they, they need something that is contrasting in colors. Uh, so if your tile is white, don't get a white grab bar, opt for a red color grab bar. So HDB East now provides uh, red, uh, red color grab bars. So unfortunately, it's just red. <laughs> There's no other uh, blue or green grab bars. Uh, but these are more than sufficient for seniors with low vision. Right. Okay, next one is um, good lighting. So good illumination can prevent falls in the nighttime or due to poor lighting. So um, most seniors, uh, they go for nighttime toileting. So it is important for you to provide sufficient lighting for them to get from the bed to the toilet. Okay, uh, fix a bedside lamp uh, or and then um, try to illuminate um, spaces along the staircase. So for example, there one of the aunties, she stays in private housing. So if you can see over there, uh, the staircase landing is quite dark, even in the daytime. So what she has done is uh, she has a light switch at the end of the, of the staircase, at the bottom of the staircase that she can, that she can uh, press and then it will light up before she goes up the steps. Alternatively, there are also motion sensor lighting nowadays. Uh, so use technology to make uh, life easier for your seniors. Yeah. Okay, next thing. Uh, remove objects that can potentially cause seniors to trip over or slip, such as loose mats, wires, small items, toys, uh, any clutter, and ensure carpet or rug corners are securely on the floor. So I was just walking around in one of the DIY shops, um, and surprisingly, I found something that's called double-sided carpet tape, <laughs> which is quite interesting. It's the first time that I saw yeah, so um, be creative. Um, you can use things like that to um, make sure that your seniors are, are living in a safe home. Okay, do not take the risk, especially if they are alone at home. Um, the best is to make sure that everything is uh, good, neat and tidy for them. Okay. 
Uh, next on to non-slip mats. Okay, non-slip mats uh, usually um, will be placed inside the bathroom. Um, most, most Singaporeans, we put floor mats uh, at the entrances of our rooms or kitchen. Um, so rugs are okay, but just make sure that uh, they have a non-slip surface underneath. Okay, so uh, place the mats Place the non-slip mats underneath your current floor cloths, uh, like you see the orange color um, cloth there. So um, sometimes we don't like the, the texture of non-slip mats. So what you do is you put the non-slip mat and then you put your floor cloth on top of the non-slip mat. Yeah. So use um, them in the bathroom to reduce the risk of falls due to slippery floor. And now there is also anti-slip floor coating. Uh, to treat um, bathroom tiles. So this um, anti-slip floor treatment is also one of the things that is available under HDBEs as well. So um, from what feedback I get from some of my patients, um, the non-slip treatment doesn't last forever. So you do have to sort of uh, get it renewed uh, every few months or uh, I'm not sure how, how often you wash the floor in the bathroom. So it really depends. Um, it might last a few months or even longer. Okay, next color contrast, uh, particularly of uh, curbs. So you can place colored tape at curb edges or stair edges for seniors with low vision. This can reduce the risk of falls due to poor eyesight and misstepping on curbs or steps. Okay, so especially if um, the two rooms have very similar colors uh, of the flooring. So you can choose to put colored tape. Okay, so you can look at DIY shops as well, uh, hardware shops, see which tape is suitable uh, for your home and what color uh, the senior prefers. Okay, mostly it's very uh, uh, bold colors, very bright and bold colors. Right. Okay, next on, we have uh, ramps. Okay, uh, for seniors who lack the strength to walk or overcome steps and require a wheelchair to move around, uh, a ramp will enable ease of overcoming areas with curbs or steps. So obviously in falls prevention, we don't, the last thing we want is for a senior who is wheelchair bound to get up from the wheelchair and try to walk over the curb, especially if the curb is quite high. So um, what we can do to ease that or to reduce the risk of falls, um, basically the senior just stays on the wheelchair and someone will have to just push her up and down the ramp, which is much easier as well for the caregiver and reduces the risk of falls because the senior has to get up, up and down the curb. Okay, so um, I have some pictures of single step entrance ramps. Okay, the good thing I like about HDBE's ramps is they have flushed corners. So if you compare to um, the picture on the right with the motorized scooter, uh, that one is a portable ramp that is sold by one of the vendors, um, uh, one of the retail vendors. So you see they don't have flushed edges. So that in itself, I feel is one of the four risk factors lah, um, because the side there is waste. So if you're approaching it from the side, I mean, there is always a risk that you trip over the ramp itself if you're walking or if the caregiver is walking or anyone is walking by that place anyway. Yeah, so flushed edges are always uh, really good. Yeah. There's also customized ramps now. Um, so they are foldable. They are made of aluminium. Uh, these are some that are done by external vendors as well as uh, HDBEs themselves. Um, for this one, you do need a caregiver to fold it up. It is a little bit heavy. Uh, for an able-bodied person, I think you can manage one person. Um, but for seniors, definitely, I think they might have some difficulty. So if you have a caregiver with your senior, that'll be great. Um, so this is mainly for wheelchair purposes. Okay. All right. So where can I apply RAMs? Okay. So similarly, HDBEs provides this service via direct application online. 
Um, you can also ask your occupational therapist if this is suitable for your seniors, uh, especially uh, maybe if your senior is partly mobile walking or, and partly on wheelchair. So you want to know if this is suitable for your walking senior or is it for any particular uh, wheelchair or scooter. Yeah. And RAMs are also one option that you can take in your HIV. You can always self-purchase and install. So that is where the, um, the retail vendors come in. You can just approach them, give them a call, ask them to come uh, and survey the site, uh, get them to measure, and then you can do it uh, for, let's say, um, if you live in private housing, things like that. Yeah. So things to consider before, before installing a RAM. Uh, okay, for this one, uh, it's at a corridor RAM. So what you see, the very big, uh, L-shaped RAM, platform RAM. So you have to have sufficient corridor space. Uh, this is for um, SCDF purposes. So they do need 1.2 meters walking space. So if I go back to this um, middle photo, if you see there's so much space for people to walk in front of the unit. Okay. Whereas if you have a corner unit, then that's fine. There's no problem with that. You can just put your RAM over there. So length of the RAM required, um, you have to keep in mind and obstruction of neighboring unit. Okay. So sometimes if your RAM is too long, the L-shaped RAM is too long and then it might obstruct your neighboring unit. Okay. So all these things will be considered by uh, HDB uh, when they come to do the inspection. And even uh, retail vendors, they will also consider all these factors. Okay. If your RAM is inside the toilet, um, is there sufficient space for the run of the RAM? So RAMs, um, they have requirements. So they cannot be too steep because that will be dangerous for the wheelchair or for anyone who is walking on the RAM. So um, uh, you must have enough space for the RAM inside the toilet. So some toilets are way too small. So eventually it is uh, not suitable for installation of the RAM. So, and then one more thing is uh, the toilet door able to close after the RAM installation. So some uh, doors might need to change. Uh, if you have the financial means, some opt to change the door. Um, because some uh, sliding doors, they have a rail at the bottom. So sometimes it obstructs. Uh, so there are things you have to consider. Yeah. Okay. So one word of caution uh, is to use RAMs, um, um, for those seniors who are still mobile to use RAMs with caution. So you have to consult uh, a therapist if you're unsure um, because some medical conditions um, will cause your seniors to have lack of balance uh, and actually walking on the RAMs is um, even more uh, dangerous than walking up and down a curb. So for example, uh, patients with Parkinsonism, typically, they have a uh, very stiff uh, trunk. Uh, they cannot counterbalance. So when, when they are going down, they cannot, their body cannot counterbalance to the back. So they have a lot of forward momentum. So actually, in this case, uh, it's not very suitable for them to go up and down the ramps. So this is just one example. Um, your senior might have other medical conditions. Uh, other background diagnosis that we don't know of. So if you're not sure, uh, just consult a therapist and we will see whether it's suitable for them. Okay, so the last part of my talk, uh, we'll talk about home setup, all right? So um, apart from preventing falls in your home, removing hazards and everything, uh, at the end of the day, we want them to be independent. We want things to be easier for them at home. We don't want to make things difficult for them. Okay, uh, when things are easier for them, um, it gives them confidence. Uh, it gives them a sense of safety, and uh, they are more encouraged to do things more independently. All right. Um, so first of all, avoid sitting on movable plastic stool or chairs with wheels. So these are some habits that you need to encourage in the elderly, and. Of course, uh, if you can, as um, the next of kin, you can make sure that the home doesn't have all these uh, movable plastic stools that they like to sit on. 
Yeah, so I know uh, it's convenient. It can be dragged anywhere. They can use it anywhere. And uh, I think it's quite a favorite among elderly. Um, but yes, it's not actually the best thing to sit on. You can put things on it, but uh, not to sit on. Because um, depending on how well they walk, how well they sit and stand from the chair, um, these tools uh, can just move when they try to sit. You know? Yeah. So use a sturdy chair with a backrest and armrest uh, wherever possible. Okay. If uh, this is really, really not possible after you have tried to encourage them or you have explored other alternatives, um, the next uh, best thing is to actually lean the chair against the wall okay, whenever you need to use it. All right, um, there's also a thing called portable bed rails to prevent incidences of falling off the bed. So um, in my years of work in geriatrics, um, actually it is quite common for seniors to fall off the bed. Um, so an alternative to buying hospital beds with bed rails is actually to use portable bed rails. Okay. So um, basically, they have uh, two protrusions there that you can um, slide under the mattress. Yeah, so you also have to see whether your mattress is a thick and sturdy one. Um, if, your, if your senior is using a very thin mattress, uh, it's not uh, ideal. Uh. Yeah, so um, the good thing about portable, portable bed rails is um, they can also hold on to it to get up from the bed, to stand up from the bed as well. So next one, place frequently used items at waist level or eye level. So this is just basically home setup um, that will make things convenient for the elderly. Okay, don't make them bend to very low drawers or low cabinets, um, uh, especially for things that they use very often. Okay, um, very high things in very high cabinets. Okay, so they will find that you have to climb onto a chair or climb onto a stool to get to it. So avoid climbing onto furniture to reach for items on overhead cabinets. Okay. Um, next, sit on a chair or a sofa that is higher than knee height as it is more difficult to get up from a low surface. Okay, so like we have our Pachi there who is very comfortable in his sofa. But if you see, he is actually quite sunken down in the sofa and he is really having a very hard time getting up from the sofa <laughs> in actual fact. Uh, he's walking with a rollator frame, so that means his mobility is not exactly fantastic. So even though it's the most comfortable thing in the house, uh, it's not exactly very suitable uh, to sit on. Um, because, um, I mean, generally, uh, it's not good for the caregiver as well. Lah. Yeah, so Hachi is um, being assisted by Machi, which is not very young as well. So we try not to torture them. Lah. Okay, next thing. Um, use a long-handled reacher to pick up items to avoid squatting, stooping, and falling over. So long-handled reacher um, is what you see on the second picture at the bottom. Okay, it's a long stick um, that is like a kyap kyap thing. <laughs> so you can kyap the handle and uh, there will be the thing at the end that will kyap your item. Yeah. So uh, it's very handy for very light items picking up things from the floor. Right, so you don't have to squat or stoop, especially for elderly who have um, less strength on their legs. Okay, uh, install a wireless doorbell or bell at the bedside to call for assistance from your caregiver. So, um, for for seniors who require more assistance in walking, okay, uh, it will be great if you have a call bell system. Um, so, um, unlike the hospital. What you can do as an alternative at home is to install a doorbell, all right, just beside the bed. Okay, okay. Nowadays there are also um, good technology that you can use. Um, so there's a thing called uh, fall prevention bed alarm system. Okay, so the alarm sounds immediately when pressure is released from the sensor pad. So this sensor pad uh, is put on the bed. Okay, um, so when the senior is uh, lying down on it. Um, the sensor pad uh, senses the pressure on it. Okay, so when the senior tries to get up, uh, it will activate a, an alarm sound. So that's when you know that uh, they have gotten up from the bed and then you have to attend to them. Yeah, so I find that 
this is a good alternative for let's say uh, seniors who have dementia so they are not aware no matter how many times you tell them that don't get up from the bed uh, don't try to walk by themselves uh, they have no awareness of safety um, usually in dementia so you can use technology to assist you um, if you can't keep an eye on them uh, most of the time yeah. okay and then lastly sit on a shower chair or a commode shower uh, or a commode to shower and set up all soaps and water faucets within easy reach. So normally I will recommend the shower chair to be placed against the wall, um, just right at the corner where your water faucet is and your soaps are. Yeah, so um, basically that if they can sit down and then reach for everything they need to shower, okay, and then uh, have that grab bar right beside at the wall for them to stand up if they need to reach for the towel. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ensure footwear and bedroom slippers are not slippery. Okay. And ensure the bed height is suitable for the senior, not too low and not too high. So as a reference, um, just slightly higher than the knee height will be good uh, for you to get up from the surface easily. Okay. And uh, for those with bathtub or uh, those in private housing with bathtub, you can place a bath stool and some grab bars inside the bathtub. Yep. So I understand bathtubs can be really slippery sometimes. Um, so um, usually I will recommend some grab bars at the, at the entrance of the bathtub. If you can see on the second picture, there's a vertical grab bar on the left. Okay, so you can hold on to it and cross over with your legs. Okay, or you can put a bath stool in the bathtub. So you just sit down and scoot, scoot, scoot over into the bathtub. Okay. And of course, you can also put some anti sleep mats inside the bathtub. All right. So we're almost concluding this talk. All right. So in a nutshell, remove fall hazards at home, like what I mentioned. Okay. Provide additional supports to compensate for your seniors' decreased physical function. All right. So um, some physical functions can be improved with rehabilitation, but some are chronic or their rehabilitation potential is not very good. So what we can do is to compensate for it, provide more supports. Okay. Next is to help them overcome the fear of falls and post-fall anxiety. So after falls, they will usually be overly guarded. Um, they won't want to do anything. Um, because they are very afraid of falling down again. So this is what um, you see in the picture is uh, about fall cycle. So when someone falls, especially the elderly, they have less activity. Okay, It's either they self-limit or they are limited by the false injury. Okay, As a result of that, when you don't do anything, there's decreased muscle strength and balance. Okay, And because there is decreased muscle strength and balance and there's a fear of falling again, there is also a risk of increased uh, increased risk of falling. Okay, so you just get weaker and you get more scared, and then you there's an increased risk of falling, also, right? So we try to support their independence uh, in the home. Okay, the home is somewhere that we have a lot of control of, so that's why we try to maximize as much as we can inside the home. All right, and of course, like what I mentioned, we try to break. The fall cycle. Right. Okay, now uh, let's take a look at the chat box. All right. Okay. What is the height recommendation for grab bars? Okay. If you apply under HDBEs, uh, there's, um, there are categories that they will ask for. Uh, zone 1, Zone 2, Zone 3. So what they will ask for is uh, the risk increase height. So when your senior stands up, uh, get them to relax, put your hands down. So you measure the height from the floor to the wrist. The wrist, ah, the wrist. Yeah. So that is the wrist crease height. Okay. So each wrist crease height uh, will um, coincide with a certain zone. Um, so um, HDB will, will install appropriately, yes. Okay. Otherwise, you, what you can do is uh, to simulate the situation. 
Okay, so um, if let's say height of vertical grab bars is quite a range, right? What you can do is get your senior to stand where you want to put the grab bar at and what is their comfortable height. Okay, usually it's about uh, like that. Lah. Yeah, not too low, not too high. Yeah. There are a few circular holes in the grab bar capping. Do we have to drill all the holes during installation? Mm, I think I get what you mean. <laughs> uh, if it's HDB installing for you, I think uh, no problems about that. I think they know best. Uh, but if you're installing on your own, um, I suggest at least um, three to four anchors. Lah. Yeah. Um, not just one, of course. Um, either uh, three or four. Yeah. Uh, uh, most importantly, is is it very secure? Um, there's no risk of it being pulled out, lah. Yeah. Okay. Next question. My BTO is in twenty twenty four. I want to do grab bars. What is your advice? Should I apply first to HIP? May I know how to apply? Okay, future BTOs. Um, if you have your own contractors uh, engaged to reno your toilets and everything, um, you can actually buy the grab bars off the shelf and get your contact contractor to just install it for you while you're at it. Okay. Um, otherwise, if it's not very urgent, uh, you can wait for all your reno to be done and then um, you can install the grab bar. Uh, after that via HDDEs. But what you need to know is uh, because of the pandemic and contractor seconded to HDD and all that, um, there is a waiting time. Lah. So even with urgent requests from a therapist, I see that um, HDD will only contact the person, I think, two to three weeks after the application. So after they contact, then they need to install. So I think the whole process will take about a month. So by the time you are in urgent need for it, I think it'll be quite late. So if you know that somebody, an elderly, is going to live in your BTO uh, in 2024, just buy it off the shelf um, and then get your contractor to fix it um, while they are doing the reno. So one shot. Lah. Yeah. So I've had some patients who stay together with their their children, so their children also has a new flat, and yeah, they just do it one shot, no problem. Yeah. Okay, next question. For longer lasting for sleep resistant treated tiles, it is recommended. Is it recommended not to use harsh chemicals to wash? Okay. Uh, okay, so this is a suggestion. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so um, I am assuming you have tried, and this is your recommendation. It is recommended not to use harsh chemicals to wash for towels. Okay. Yes, good point. Okay, next question. I am moving into a smaller three-room flat. Heard that the toilets are smaller and may not fit a wheelchair very well. Yes, uh, that is correct. So um, three-room flats, especially if you buy um, resale three-room flats, um, some of the toilets, the toilet door are really really small uh, so yeah you can you cannot put a wheelchair through it so alternative for your senior um, it really depends on the function of the senior so if your senior or you yourself can still walk because um, some people use the wheelchair in the community like when they are in their home they don't need a wheelchair uh, for example when they are in their home they can use a walking stick or a quad stick or a walking frame so it depends um, is your toilet door wide enough for a walking frame, for example? Okay. Um, so if you cannot fit a wheelchair, can you fit a walking frame? Or can you fit uh, your walking aid, lah, basically, through the, through the door? Yeah. So um, in worst case scenarios, you cannot fit a wheelchair and your senior cannot get up and walk at all, too weak, has a stroke, for example. Um, actually, what... Uh, what people do is they shower inside the kitchen. Yeah, that is the worst case scenario. Okay, they shower inside the kitchen, let the water flow into the there's a drainage in the kitchen lah. So they just uh, install like a sort of a curtain at the kitchen entrance. Okay, and then uh, put some blinds at the kitchen uh, windows, and then they will shower the senior uh, inside the kitchen. 
uh, using a commode or a, or a shower chair. Yeah. So it really depends um, whether your senior really needs to be on the wheelchair or can they walk using a walking aid. Mm. If they can walk using a walking aid, then you can try going into the toilet with your walking aid. All right, where to buy the sensor pad things? Um, the sensor pads, uh, you can try looking at Rehab Mart SG. Um, I think there are some vendors that sell them. You can do a Google to go to their website, uh, Rehab Mart. Okay. Um, and type in fall prevention sensor pads, something like that. Sometimes if you go to... Changi Hospital or SGH, they have Lifeline, they have DNR, um, all these kind of retail vendors. You can just pop in and ask them or you can give them a call. Yeah. Next one. Where to buy grab bus? Worry contractors not as good as HDB. Can I apply first? End of 2023, so that when 2024 my BTO comes, I can buy us with HDB. Timing ah, uh, can I apply first? Yeah, so, uh, I'm really not sure whether you can apply for HDB is way beforehand because HDB is they already have a very long queue. Their response time is quite slow, so I'm afraid. I'm just afraid lah. If you apply way too advanced, they might overlook your application. I'm not very sure how it works. You can uh, give HDB a call and ask about this. Yeah. Um, the contractors, uh, actually, um, installing the grab bus, um, it's quite straightforward, I think. Um, as much as the drilling goes, lah, I think there's not, uh, you, can, you can check it out, how, how many screws, the drilling and all that. Um, you might want to supervise your contractors a bit more and see whether it's sturdy or not. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I think some grab bus, uh, some contractors would have some experience um, installing grab bus. I mean, if they can install racks and all that and like cabinetry, I'm quite sure they can install grab bus. Yeah. Okay, hi Liana, where to buy the long handled reacher? That kya kya, uh, kya kya, kusu kya kya, <laughs> kya kya. <laughs> Yeah, uh, long handed reacher. Um, DNR sells it. Uh, yep. I recommend going to the the retail vendors uh, to buy it. It's slightly more expensive, but sometimes you can find the similar cap cap at the you know, kind of um uh, neighborhood shops that sells your pale mop, um broom. Sometimes they have sell. I've seen it there. Very cheap, uh, but it breaks very fast also. Uh, so go to retail uh, vendors such as uh, DNR. Um, yeah, DNR has DNR wheels. D N R. Okay, just the alphabets. D N R wheels. Yeah, they are a quite a well known uh, retail vendor for assistive equipment. Yeah, you can buy online. You can self collect at UB as well. Okay. Uh, I'm not promoting any companies. So it's just resource, okay. Uh, actually, HDB kitchens don't have waterproofing membrane. It will cause uh, spoiling concrete and water leaking to the unit below. And if need to do repairs, both the world. Yeah, I'm aware of this. Um, yeah. But it's really, when you have really no choice, yeah, that is the... That is the only option, basically. I guess uh, it's a pros and cons as well. Uh, over time, of course, showering in the kitchen shouldn't be the go-to option. Um, you can try to rehabilitate so that your senior can walk in and out of the, the toilet over time. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm aware that this is an issue. Yeah. Thank you for raising it. Okay, may I know how much is the grab bar? Thanks. Uh, grab bar retailing, uh, I think about $30 if I'm not wrong. Plus minus, depends on the shop. Um, 
Always do a Google SMS. Okay, hence it is not recommended to the teacher. Okay. All right. Uh, how about a four-room flat? Will the toilet be large enough compared to a three-room ones? Yeah, I happen to know. Um, I'm really not sure because um, I mean generally BTOs the the door width is good, is very suitable for wheelchair. Um, but if you're talking about three room resale flats and four room resale flats, it might vary. So I'm really not sure. What you can do um, is go and measure, go and measure the width of the the width of the wheelchair, and then if you're going for your uh, house hunting. Um, you can just do a measurement. Yeah, I'm really not sure. I think it varies a lot. What about fall prevention at dark places or during night time? Okay, yep. So this was mentioned before in the slides. Uh, good illumination, good lighting is important. Uh, so dark places, basically the cause is it being dark. So how we overcome it, we just um, provide sufficient lighting. So motion sensor lighting or good, um, very, not very bright, sufficient lighting. I would recommend white lighting, not yellow lighting. Uh, that will be good during nighttime. Okay, and make sure uh, your switches, your light switches are placed in good places. Lah. So sometimes your light switches are placed already far inside the room. I'm not sure, maybe that's not very ideal. Okay. Grab bars are not expensive. HTP usually recommended grab bars. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So yes. Good point. HTP is actually uh, allows um, quite a number of grab bars uh, to be installed at one go. So you can take the option of kitchen, kitchen toilet, bedroom, bedroom toilet, bathroom. Yeah. Forum flat also quite tight for commode chair. Uh, okay. Yeah. Good sharing. Good sharing. Hi Diana, this will be the last question and pass back to Ida. Sorry, one more at QA. Okay. Where are you? Open one. You mentioned chair one to two is high. Is that refer uh, inch la inch? One to two inches. One to two inches higher than the uh than the uh knee height. Yeah. Okay, that's all. All right, thank you very much and thank you for the sharing in the chat box. HIP is for grab bus cost eleven dollars <laughs> for one set of six. Oh, it's a good deal. Yeah, I think it also depends on um, whether your your pet is five room or four room. I think yeah, HDP is varies in terms of its subsidy. So if you stay in three room versus five room, the subsidy will be different. Yes. Okay, thank you everybody. All right, I'll pass over to Uda. Thank you so much, Liana, for the beneficial knowledge that you have uh, shared today. And thank you so much, attendees, for attending this talk. Um, if you have any further questions, you can contact Liana at liana at sata.com.sg or you can call our hotline at 6244-6688. Um, I repeat. My email address, uh, sorry, uh, my email address is liana.nabila. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Liana.nabila at satacomhealth.com.sg uh, Liana.nabila at sata.com.sg Alright, and our hotline is 6244-6688. Till then, stay safe and goodbye everyone.